All right, welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, and all around raging capitalist. And in today's video, I'm very excited to go into an overview and bit of a tutorial into the mempool or memory pool. Um, for those of you who are returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends. As always, it is fantastic to have you. Um, but you know that at the end of each of my videos, I leave you with some humble guidance that every sat counts, every satoshi counts, right? And we're used to thinking about acquiring or stacking sats. But in this video, I want to take kind of the other side of the coin, uh, pun intended, and go through how to preserve your sats, right, uh, in terms of transaction fees. How do we use the mempool uh, and get smarter about when we conduct transactions so as to avoid overpaying on transaction fees if we don't have to, right? Uh, for those who are new to the channel, welcome to you as well. It is great to have you here as part of our merry gang in cyberspace. Uh, I hope you enjoy this content. If you do, consider subscribing. It really does help get these messages out to more folks on their quest to becoming financially sovereign, which is what this channel is all about. Um, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up uh, around uh, stacks, lightning, some of the very exciting stuff that's happening uh, on kind of Bitcoin's layer two and or around the blockchain. Um, we've got more wallet tutorials coming up, uh, Spectre as popularly demanded. So uh, if you're not subscribed already, you are going to miss out and I wouldn't want that to happen. With all of that out of the way though, Let's go ahead and jump into the video for today and talk about what is the mempool. So let's talk about what is the mempool or memory pool, right? Mempool is just short for memory pool. And it is essentially a waiting room, uh, almost like a purgatory for uh, valid transactions. Um, for those of you who have seen my prior videos on how does the Bitcoin system work, how do transactions work? Um, be sure to check that out if you haven't seen it. But you'll know that essentially as I send you know, Bitcoin to a friend, that transaction is being propagated through nodes on the network. And each node is sort of verifying the, you know, uh, the veracity of that transaction saying, is this valid or not? Once the node, once each node has deemed that transaction valid, that transaction goes into that node's mempool. So each node is sort of keeping this uh, set of unconfirmed transactions. And it is from this mempool that miners will come and pick up transactions. Um, now, what is the mechanism by which miners choose to, you know, which transactions to include and which transactions to not include? A lot of it comes down, of course, to the fees, right? If I'm a miner and I uh, have self-interest in my, you know, economic uh, gains and operations in my business, I'm going to probably choose the transactions that have the highest fees attached to them. Um, whereas, you know, transactions that have lower fees might sit in the mempool um, and, you know, not, not get as much love. Now, the standard um, kind of quantification that you'll see is SAT per VB or SAT per virtual byte sat here just being a satoshi right there's 100 million satoshis in every bitcoin and virtual byte uh just think of it like bytes except the virtual piece has to do with um uh with segwit uh addresses so don't worry too much just think of it as again satoshi per uh you know per virtual byte or essentially per amount of data right that is like that is the kind of uh metric that miners are going to optimize for because when we think about the um, space limitations in a Bitcoin block, as we've covered in prior videos, there is a one megabyte cap, uh, and that's one megabyte in virtual byte terms. Uh, just, just keep that in mind. Um, so that's, that's kind of the idea and essence in a nutshell. Again, we have this kind of standard way of measuring transactions. Um, Many of the wallets you use hopefully enable you to specify the uh, transaction fees in terms of sats per uh, VB. And so you could, you know, it's typically in a little slider. You could slide it more aggressively if you're, 
if you want the transaction to be picked up by a miner sooner rather than later, or if you're in no rush, you know, you can, uh, you can kind of drag that down to a more conservative, lower transaction fee level, and it'll be picked up when it gets picked up. Um, so, you know, there are wallets out there that don't allow for that uh, type of compatibility. I'm assuming probably, you know, some mainstream exchanges like Coinbase probably kind of do it for you. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. It is an important uh, lever that you have in your arsenal uh, to kind of pay the, the right amount of fees as it were. So that's the idea in a nutshell. Let's now actually jump in to um, this very handy application that visualizes the mempool for us. So let's go ahead and jump into that next. All right, so this is the visualization of the mempool. This is mempool.space. I'll link this in the description down below. Um, but this is a terrific, uh, you can go to the um, information kind of icon and just see kind of some of the different kind of sponsors. But this is a fully open source uh, you know, project available for free. A uh, lot of backers, obviously. And uh, shout out to Soft Simon and Wiz in particular, uh, who are the kind of main uh, maintainers of this. And it is a super useful tool, as we will cover. Uh, if we come to this sort of overall homepage, uh, let's just orient ourselves to what we're looking at. So this dividing line here uh, sort of separates transactions that have been settled into the different blocks uh, to the right, right? So we can see each of these blocks is an actual block uh, that has been confirmed on the Bitcoin blockchain. And then to the left, you have all the different sort of unconfirmed transactions sitting in, um, you know, different kind of sections based on their transaction fee amount. Uh, so let's just kind of go through an example here. So on the right, we see block 688496. Uh, it is a of size 1.35 megabyte. Now keep in mind the, the one megabyte limitation for a Bitcoin block uh, is on a virtual byte basis. Um, and so given how that works, this number in, in reality here uh, ends up a little bit bigger. That is fine. Uh, we see that there were 2,204 transactions packaged into this block. And that had an average fee rate of about 57 sats uh, per virtual byte. Now, this is pretty high. And so what's happening today is, as you can see in the bottom right, uh, June 22nd, uh, people are losing their pants over the you know death cross and Michael Burry and uh, you know uh, the migration of hash rate out of China. So um, these are uh, these are just beautiful days for hodlers uh, like many of us. And so hopefully you're not losing your your pants. Uh, this is just an amazing buying opportunity. Um, but you'll see that you know there is a lot of um, there is a lot of activity today, and the fee rates are uh, are certainly elevated. Now let's go to the left of this dotted line. Um, and what this allows us to do is to see the estimated next couple of blocks um, that will be you know, confirmed to the blockchain. So in about, keep in mind, every, a new block gets added to the Bitcoin blockchain uh, every 10 minutes on average. It is probabilistic, hence the on average part. Um, and you'll see that you know, these 2,038 transactions have an average fee rate of about 50. Um, and so, you know, these are going to be estimated to be added next. The next tranche down you'll see has an estimated or has an average uh, fee rate of about 44. And again, that's in an estimated 20 minutes, uh, 43, 37, and so on and so forth. And so you'll see that all the way here at the end, at the left, um, there's you know 14,800 transactions sitting in the mempool uh, with an average um, you know fee rate of of about 15, but the spread as you can see is all the way, everything between one to 33. So some of these transactions that have been uh, you know made with one sat per virtual byte are probably going to sit for quite some time, right? There's 21 blocks worth of transactions. Um, you know, that are not yet sort of queued up in these other blocks that are going to be more prioritized. Um, and you can kind of see that overall uh, low, medium, high priority. This is just a nice way to sort of um, separate things out. 
uh, and it gives you the the kind of um, you know average level. And so if you're, if, for example, if you're coming in and you really need a transaction to happen, uh, you know, relatively quickly, you could come in and see that. All right, well, the going rate for a high priority is about 55 you know sats per per virtual byte. So if you're willing to pay that, go for it. Um, if if instead you come in like a day today and see everyone losing their pants and shirts and uh, you know you say you know what like that's okay uh, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna wait a little bit and come back on another day and when it's more empty you know that that might be something that you do as well again we're not talking crazy huge differences but it really does uh, really does add up especially when you think about the um, future appreciation uh, potential for Sats. Um, you also get you know some different statistics around the difficulty adjustment, uh, incoming transactions. Uh, you get this nice uh, chart that shows the depth of the mempool uh, with different sort of um, you know different sort of uh, fee amounts. You get context on the the all the latest blocks. You even see like specific transactions, which is quite useful just to see you know the amount of, of the transactions as well as the fees that are being paid. So again, you can see some some larger ones here with some high fees. Uh, again, a lot of a lot of weak, jelly-handed folks uh, uh, out today, it seems. Um, and so, you know, you can. There's a couple other tabs at the top. Uh, you can again see the uh, the full detail of the uh, of the blocks. Um, you can go, you know, into specific blocks and just see some of the different uh, information. Who was it mined by, etc. Uh, you can get some uh, really nice graphs. This just shows a more kind of long-term picture uh, of, again, this is the mempool by virtual bytes. Uh, and you have these different tranches of, um, of fee levels. And so you can see that we're actually still, you know, by historical uh, terms, you know, a lot kind of, you know, much lower down than we were earlier in this year. Um, but it is, it is kind of picking up, you know, uh, today as we see some of this selling activity. Uh, and you know, you can even you visualize this in, in different ways. So that's really all I wanted to cover. Um, if we come back to this overview page, one other really useful piece I wanted to point out is that when you make a uh, transaction, regardless of the wallet you're using, you should have a transaction ID uh, that you can put into this text box here in the top right. And what that's going to do is it will um, it will give you some further context about the transaction, but it'll also give you kind of a helpful pointer in terms of where it stands on the left-hand side if it's still unconfirmed. Uh, so you can get a sense of like, where, where am I in the queue? Um, and as we'll talk about uh, next in terms of some practical considerations, how might you go back and adjust the fee uh, if you would so desire? Very last piece I wanted to call out, if you uh, hit this drop down, um, you'll see that there are a couple other options. So of course the main net is probably what you wanna be on, uh, but it also has the Bitcoin test net. Uh, and then it also has the BISC and Liquid networks, which are kind of cool. Liquid is a side chain and BISC is a sort of, um, you know, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer exchange. I've actually done a video on BISC, uh, so go check that out as well. Uh, but that's really it. So super useful uh, kind of application. Um, hope this all makes sense. Let's go ahead and just cover a couple practical considerations uh, as it relates to transaction fees and uh, Bitcoin transactions. All right, so as you can tell, pretty slick, right? Um, it really does give a, a wealth of information about what's happening you know, in the mempool that can really help inform more intelligent selections as it relates to transaction fees in order to kind of optimize for this trade-off of confirmation time as well as the fees that you are paying. Just a couple practical considerations. Um, you know, obviously the main sort of use case of this is to be able to gauge how either backed up or not backed up uh, the mempool is. And so, uh, for example, you know, um, intensive transactions such as uh, coin mixing with coin joins especially if you're using something like Wasabi's uh, implementation where it typically kind of takes in, um, you know, a smaller amount of Bitcoin and then it mixes that. And then if you want to do more, you're kind of, you know, uh, iteratively doing that across the, the total stack that you want to mix. 
Um, by the way, side note, check out my most recent video before this uh, for some just broader perspective on kind of privacy, coin joining. Um, there are some kind of pros and cons to be aware of. Uh, so just a sidebar there. Um, but it could also be, you know, hey, you've been waiting to open uh, a lightning payment channel, uh, which requires an on chain uh, transaction, uh, or you've been, you know, waiting to send some Bitcoin to uh, a different cold storage wallet, right? Like, all of these things are um, instances in which you would probably uh, like to minimize the, the amount of fees that you're paying. And so the mempool can kind of give you context and insight into uh, when it's particularly empty and therefore, you know, your transaction could, could get through at a cheaper fee rate. Um, the other thing to be aware of, you know, some folks will just kind of put a couple sats per VB on their uh, transaction and just kind of wait and hope. Um, what typically happens is if, a, if enough time has passed, um, usually around two days, couple, you know, a couple days, um, could be more or less, your transaction will actually just get dropped out uh, and, and the funds will be returned to your wallet. So um, don't don't assume that it will like eventually, um, uh, it'll eventually get picked up. Like there may be cases in which it actually does not and you'd have to kind of, you know, re redo the transaction. Um, and then one other final note is there are a number of wallets that provide um, the ability to do what's called a replace by fee. And this essentially allows you to kind of click into your tr your pending transaction and readjust the fees. So maybe you increase it uh, if you're like, OK, you know, I gave it a shot. I waited, but I, I want this to now go through. Uh, you can kind of go in and um, increase the amount of fees. So just a couple kind of practical considerations there. Let's go ahead and now wrap this video up. All right, so there you have it. You are now a mempool expert. Just to recap a bit, we went through a conceptual overview of the mempool and talked about how it relates to the broader Bitcoin transaction process. Uh, we also went through mempool.space, which is the excellent open source uh, app that allows us to really visualize a lot of what's going on in the mempool in order to get smarter about transaction fees. Uh, we should all kind of, you know, embrace um, paying miners for their incredibly valuable services uh, of confirming and settling transactions that uh, are on this, you know, magic uh, internet money, decentralized uh, network. However, rationally, we should also similarly uh, not be willing to overpay for those services. And so the mempool allows us to get smarter. Uh, if this saves you a few sats over time, hey, that's, uh, that is well worth it. Um, so we'll go ahead and leave this video here for now. I hope you found this content useful and valuable. If you did, you already know what to do. Give this video a like, comment down below. Let me know uh, what topics, themes you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks to many of you who have done that. Uh, but all of this really does, again, help get these messages and tools out to more folks on their quest for becoming financially sovereign. So we'll leave it there for now. As always, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.